very good evening. From stories around the world to stories here at home, this is the National News Broadcast. I'm Vidushni Sadis Kumar. A very good evening to you. I'm Dishan Virakon, and let's take a look at the headlines for tonight. A statement from the Prime Minister that the country cannot be built up through slogans and spreading racism. Those who raped 100 women and holding celebrations speaking about women's rights is false, Minister Sajid says. The actions of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna is a hindrance to future discussions. Allegations from the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. Protests in the vicinity of Halpstorp courts have been banned for 10 days. European Union comments the progress achieved by Sri Lanka in promoting human rights and protecting basic freedom. The storm Dorian becomes a Category 5 hurricane. In your local stories this evening, Prime Minister Anil Vikramasinghe says that the country can be built up not through slogans or creating racism. He made this comment at a meeting held yesterday in the town of Kuliapitiya. A number of development projects in Kuliapitiya were vested in the public under the patronage of Prime Minister Anil Vikramasinghe yesterday. The foundation stone was laid for the Narangal Technological National Education Faculty and the new medical faculty of the Northwestern University, as well as many development projects commenced. The Prime Minister addressed the meeting held in the centre of the Kuliapitiya town. Prime Minister Anil Vikramasinghe said that during the last general election, he came to the same place that he would provide a medical faculty to Kuliapitiya. He said that today he was here to declare it open and to lay the foundation stone for the teaching hospital. This, the Premier said, was one challenge he took on on behalf of the Kurunagar district. Today there is a new city here and it is a hub of Sri Lanka. There was a university, technical college, a technology faculty, as well as schools only in Kandy, but now the second such city is Kuliapitiya. All of these things do not exist even in Colombo. He said he needs to say one thing, and that is that he does not build culverts and he is there to build up the country. Therefore, he said he would like to say that he would build Kurunagal on behalf of the generation of youth. If the country and race are to be saved, work has to be carried out and the country strengthened and a Sri Lanka, which anyone can be proud of, requires to be created. He said they will not leave the government and flee. He said that a government that people will trust in needs to be set up. He said that at the same time, a large export economy has to be established and that it is necessary for the country to go to the world market and compete. For this, the businessmen have to be strengthened and similarly, foreign investments have to be obtained. The Prime Minister further said that based on the foundation that has been built up now, it should be moved further forward. If it is destroyed, there will be no chance to be saved. A group of people, including people's representatives, were present on this occasion. Now, rulers who pretended not to see during the past government when Pradesh's Sabha chairman raped women and held parties will once again come to power and give false promises today that they will protect women's rights, Minister Sajid Premadasa said. The 269th and the 270th model villages constructed under the Samata Seven Yali Pibi then Uda Gamman program were vested in the public today under the patronage of Minister Sajid Premadasa. The reawakened villages of Kumaran, Kudiripu, and Kalikapuram constructed in Tantamale and Manmune southwest in Batikro comprises of 51 houses. A sum of 45 million rupees was spent on each house. The minister handed out housing entitlement cards and engaged in a number of social welfare activities as well. Minister Sajid Premadasa said that those who spoke in favour of women did not do so when they were in power. When some Pradesh Sabha chairman raped more than 100 women and held functions to commemorate that, their political masters remained silent and approved of those activities. Not only that, during those days this same fate befell on some, on some women rather who came from abroad too. Now these same people are saying that they should be given power to protect women. He questioned whether persons who did nothing while such incidents against women were taking place could protect women in the future. 
He further said that dark shadows of public service were experienced. At the same time, some individuals are trying to deprive them of the opportunity to hold freely a meeting and making a speech similar to coming to this Udaga Mane using thuggery and terror. These people say they will ensure national security, but what they are doing is taking the first step towards dis destroying democracy in this country. The decorations for this function were completely destroyed last night, and he said his photographs were also damaged totally. Whoever tries to destroy his photographs, the minister said, the honest service rendered to the people will always remain in their hearts. Sri Lanka Freedom Party alleges that activities of the Sri Lanka Pudjana Perimuna are a strong hindrance to the discussions being engaged in with the party. The General Secretary and the national organizer of the SLFP said that the party is strongly displeased regarding certain actions of the SLPP. General Secretary of the SLFP, Dasiri Jayasekra, said that Sri Lanka Freedom Party has been divided into two because of these people and it is difficult to get it back together. Discussions were held with former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa and Basir Rajapaksa regarding the problem that arises when a party breaks up. As decided, SPD Sanayaka and Dilan Pereira were taken away and membership was given to them. If the SLFP works together with the Sri Lanka Pudjana Perimuna, both parties can become one. They have already appointed the Prime Minister and the presidential candidates on their own. He said that what they have to do is change the symbol and come to a place where everyone joins together and work together. If that does not happen, he said the party will have to be rescued. National organizer of the SLFP, Duminda Desanayaka, said that these incidents took place are a hindrance to discussions. At a moment when it is being said that the former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa is gaining victories required and at a time when it is being said that support of the SLFP is also necessary and discussions were being held willingly, two parliamentarians who were appointed through the national list was recruited to the SLPP which has given rise to a doubt whether it is something that is being done by their own faction to prevent the victory of Gotabe Rajapaksa. He said that they leave it to the public of the country as to whether such individuals should be in parliament or not next time. Similarly, he said he was making a request to prevent such persons from coming into parliament. They have a responsibility to resign and hand over the two positions in the national list to the SLFP. The presidential election has not been announced as yet. Therefore, he said that they are not in a rush about it. On third, preparations have been made to commemorate on a grand, grand scale the 68th anniversary of the party. All party members will participate. Meanwhile, leader of the Janata Vimukti Perunwa, Anra Kumar Sanayaka, said that if the presidential election is to be won, the party should win over the hearts of people in villages. He said that all people's representatives should consider it as a challenge and work for it. JVP leader Anra Kumar Sanayaka expressed these views when he participated in a meeting of local government representatives of the JVP. It was held at the Municipal Hall in Colombo. It was organized under the theme Gamma Rata Colombata. Many people's representatives of the party from Parliament, Provincial Councils and Pradeshya Sabha were present. The European Union has welcomed Sri Lanka's progress made in protecting and promoting human rights and fundamental freedoms. The European Union has called to continue the achievement during a session of European Union Sri Lanka Joint Commission. The fourth meeting of the Working Group on Governance, Rule of Law and Human Rights under the European Union Sri Lanka Joint Commission was held in Colombo recently. The delegation of Sri Lanka was led by Director General for European Union and Commonwealth Division of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Sri Lanka, Dhammika Sema Singha. The delegation of the European Union was led by Head of Division for Regional Affairs and South Asia of the European External Action Service, Caroline Winnot. The meeting took place in the context of regular bilateral exchanges between the European Union and Sri Lanka and readmission of the EU GSP Plus scheme. This came in light of Sri Lanka's commitment to implement the international conventions ratified by Sri Lanka on human rights, labour rights, the protection of the environment and good governance, the Foreign Affairs Ministry said. The joint working group discussed matters related to minorities and measures to address hate speech as well as radicalization and violent extremism. 
EU and Sri Lanka have agreed to strengthen cooperation and dialogue on counterterrorism in the aftermath of the attacks. The need for new counterterrorism legislation in line with international standards and human rights was stressed. Now, Police Media Spokesman and Superintendent of Police Ruan Gunasekara said that the House Top Chief Magistrate Court has issued an order today against holding protest meetings and marches from today until the 10th in the House Top Magistrate's area of authority. Police Media Spokesman SP Ruan Gunasekara said that the Bambalapitiya Police requested from the, from the House Top Honorable Magistrate's Court an injunction order based on information received that objections and a protest were due to be held against an international summit being held in the Bambalapitiya coastal area and reported on it. Accordingly, the court has issued an injunction order that from today until the 10th of September, within the area of authority of the Magistrates' Court in Halstorp, no protests, marches and meetings could be held. This order has been issued against the convener of the Sri Lanka Jatika Balamulu, Venerable Madile Panya Lokathera, and convener of the Ravana ba Balaya, Venerable Ithayakanda Santathisathera, and against er everyone else participating in this. In compliance with this order, any activity that violates the peace has been prohibited. Now, Sri Lankan Airlines celebrate 40 years service to the nation today. Sri Lankan Airlines is a global award-winning airline that carries millions of passengers each year. Celebrating the 40th anniversary, Sri Lankan Airlines management said that airline aims to become the most customer-centric airline in Asia. Forty years ago, on September 1st, 1979, the first flight of Sri Lankan Airlines was made, the aircraft rising gracefully from Colombo's Bandanak International Airport to wing its way to Bangkok. It was the modest start of the national carrier's four decades as the mainstay of the air travel and air cargo transportation for the island nation's economy. Today, Sri Lankan Airlines carries millions of passengers each year with a route network of 109 cities in 48 countries, including coach operations in partnership with the world's finest airlines. It is firmly established as one of the leading airlines in the Indian Ocean region, being the largest carrier to both Sri Lanka and the Maldives, and the largest foreign airline in India. Sri Lankan Catering, its fully owned subsidiary, has won several international awards for its in-flight catering expertise that serves all airlines at BIA. Sri Lankan Catering recently announced the launch of a 250 million rupees project for a sophisticated new flight kitchen which would increase its production capacity to 40,000 meals per day. This is where the world comes home. Thank you for flying Sri Lankan Air. Now, His Holiness Pope Francis had got stuck in an elevator. The Pope had been rescued by firemen after 25 minutes. Cari fratelli e sorelle, buongiorno. Prima di tutto devo scusarmi del ritardo, ma è stato un incidente. Sono rimasto chiuso nell'ascensore per 25 minuti. È stato un calo di tensione e si è fermato l'ascensore. Grazie a Dio sono venuti i vigili del fuoco, ringrazio tanto a loro e dopo 25 minuti di lavoro sono riuscito a farlo andare. Un applauso ai vigili del fuoco. His Holiness Pope Francis faced this incident while arriving for his weekly speech at St. Peter's Square. During this meeting, the 82-year-old Pope said next month, 10 new Roman Catholic Cardinals will be appointed. The crowning ceremony of Miss Tam Miss Culture International Nepal took place recently in Kathmandu. The main emphasis of the event was to focus on the promotion of Visit Nepal 2020 and the rich bio-traditional culture and traditions of Nepal. The press meet and crowning ceremony was organized by National Director of Mr. and Ms. Culture International Nepal, Sunil Kumar Shrestha. Thai Airways is the airline's partner of the event. Narinton Sukhasiam, General Manager Nepal and Bhutan of Thai Airways, 
also attended the event. Finals of Mr. and Miss Nepal for Mr. and Miss Palch International will take place from 6th and 7th of September. Vietnam hosts this year's Mr. and Miss Culture International pageant to be held from 8th to 13th of September. 40 countries will take part in the completion. Finals of the Miss and Miss Culture International will be held in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam on the 13th of this month. exhibition will be held from 7th to 10th September in Jaffna. The objective of this is to promote entrepreneurship and to bring closer to the people the development tasks of the government. The exhibition comprises of seven zones, namely entrepreneurial, state and private sectors, education, green, new inventions, commercial and media. Youth in the north with expectations of entrepreneur activities and providing of required service knowledge and advice will be carried out. Government officials and officials of all state banks in this country will participate in this exhibition. The possibility of registering at that moment itself by banks for obtaining a loan will also be granted. Information regarding development work of the government and the services that are provided to the people through them can be obtained here. In addition, within these exhibition grounds, various educational programs will be implemented and people will be given an opportunity to purchase goods at low prices. A zone for new inventions has also been established. People will be given an opportunity to meet their favorite electronic media representatives as well. Here, it will be possible to view how filming is done and programs including news are being telecasted. In addition, a number of mobile services will be in operation too. At the same time, people will be granted an opportunity to attend health clinics and obtain laboratory services free of charge. Required facilitation will be provided together with advice for commencing small businesses. The exhibition, which will open at 10 a.m., will be held until midnight. A musical concert will be performed every day with the participation of popular music groups and most popular singers. Now, the National Youth Drama Competition is being held these days at the Maradana Town Hall Theatre. The long drama Adar near Maranayak of Maduranga Sri Lal is being staged today. This drama festival was organised for the 40th time by the National Youth Services Council. On the third day of this drama festival, the short dramas Avik Balana of Sandun Prasad Abe Khon, Dollar Hina of Lasantarat Nayaka, Nagga Dev of Mudita Pium Harge, as well as S. Vishwan Nuan's Appal Payum Male, the short Tamil drama was also performed. On the second day, the long drama of Nilanka Nisalanjalage, Athar Madhya, was also staged. And that is a wrap of tonight's primetime news. Until we meet again next time, do take care and good night. Good night.